It's the Pizza Hut All-Star Softball Game. Brought to you by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By your local Pizza Hut restaurant. And by Allstate for home, auto, business, health, and life. You're in good hands with Allstate. The unmistakable sounds of spring, and now with the 1985 season just a few days away, we thought we'd take you back a few weeks for the second annual Pizza Hut Softball Classic, played here at the Longboat Key Club in Sarasota, Florida. This program will serve two purposes. First of all, we'll have some fun looking at some of the best names in Major League Baseball, and also it'll be a preview of the upcoming campaign. Among the National Leaguers here today, last year's MVP in this game, Andre Dawson of the Montreal Expos. He'll be joined by the league MVP of 1984, Ryan Sandberg of the Cubs, and Cy Young Award winner Rick Sutcliffe. Also, Darryl Strawberry and Keith Hernandez for the Mets. Lou Brock, the newly elected Hall of Famer and all-time great from the Cardinals, will manage the National League squad. The American Leaguers will be piloted by another Hall of Famer, Brooks Robinson, and he'll have players like Eddie Murray and Cal Ripken of the Orioles, Jim Rice of the Red Sox, and Kirk Gibson of the Tigers to work with. We'll be back to meet the lineups in just a minute. <laughs> so body out of the closet here. It's been a while. Thought not so long that the fans don't remember their favorites. The game took place a couple of weeks before the start of spring training, so nobody was in mid-season form. But it was an excellent opportunity to renew old acquaintances and to have some fun on the softball diamond before the serious baseball business began. The Titanic struggle is now moments away, so we turn to the managers. Lou Brock for the National League, Brooks Robinson for the American, a pair of Hall of Famers, of course. Lou, your lineup. Well, actually, Bob, we have a pretty good lineup. we got Andre Dawson, the big guy from Montreal, playing center field, leading off. Tony Gwynn, who will be the National League batting champion last year, hitting second. Ryan Sandberg, the MVP of the National League, batting third. Keith Hernandez, the runner-up of the MVP from the New York Mets, hitting fourth. Craig Nettles of the... San Diego Padres hit in fifth. Darryl Strawberry from the Mets hit in sixth. Gary Matthews, who's a ro roving outfielder, hit in seventh. Hubert Brooks hit in eighth and playing shot stop now with Montreal. Jody Davis, the catcher from the Chicago Cubs, along with Rick Sutcliffe, who is pitching for the Mexican squad. And Keith Moreland will be your relief pitcher, right? He is my relief pitcher. In fact, uh, one of the rules changed and happened to be that we can bring in a non-pitcher to pitch. Keith has a good bat, so we intend to take this game. Good to have the depth in the bullpen. What about you, Brooks? Well, we've got a pretty good lineup, too. And uh, leading off the California Angels, Bobby Gritch. And the world champion, Detroit Tigers, Kurt Gibson. Cal Ripken playing shortstop in the Baltimore Orioles. And from the Boston Red Sox playing left field, Jim Rice. Eddie Murray from the Baltimore Orioles playing first base. King Cole, Kong, well, Dave Kingman playing uh, right field. <laughs> I wanted to say King Kong then, but I don't know if you'd appreciate that or not. From uh, Minnesota, Kent Herbick. He is our roamer today. Third base from the Red Sox, Wade Bo Boggs. Also, Dave Engel catching and uh, pitching Tom Seaver from the White Sox. And our uh, Alton today is Marty Barrett from the Red Sox. So if Seaver gets into trouble, we see Barrett. Yes, that's right. Well, Barrett, uh, we're going to have, it's a little strategy involved in that, Bob. So uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But Barrett's going to be in there somewhere. Now, there's only one way, the customary way, to determine who bats first. You've done it yourselves in the schoolyard. Brooks, do the honors. <laughs> I think we're home team. <laughs> National League bats first. We're here. Uh, I'm only aware of a couple of them. I know it's slow pitch, and now they're playing seven innings, so we brought home plate umpire Scott Burkett in to explain the rest. Well, first of all, there's no leading off, and there's no stealing of bases in slow pitch softball. And one of the most unusual things is concerning the pitching regulations. In slow pitch softball, each pitch must have an arc on it. And the regulations concerning the pitch, it must have a minimum arc of six feet to a maximum arc of 12 feet. And if it is not within that legal limits, then it will be an illegal pitch. And if the batter does not swing, it's automatically a ball. Now, for those who have difficulty with the Pythagorean theorem, how do you actually determine whether or not it has fallen within those specifications? Well, I wear glasses, and it's uh, mostly umpire judgment as to whether or not it falls in there. And you can call a batter out on strikes. He doesn't have to swing and miss. He you does can, not. You he can does give not, him a walk, right? He does not have to swing and miss. He can walk. And another rule in slow pitch play, a foul ball with two strikes, and the batter is out. Thanks, Scott. A look at the dimensions. It's 270 feet down both the left and right field lines and 285 feet to straightaway center. 
Andre Dawson steps in to face Tom Seaver to start it off at the Longboat Key Club in Sarasota. Before the game, they had a home run hitting contest, and in five swings, Andre put four over the wall, which is not easy. A distance of 270 feet down the lines with a softball off slow pitch. It's tough. No one else managed any better than two. Kirk Gibson hit two in five swings for the American Leaguers. 2-0 the count to Dawson. Finds this one to his liking and lines it over Ripken's head for a game opening single. Or is it more? Trying to stretch it and he is safe. So Dawson, despite the argument posed by Bobby Gritch, catches Kurt Gibson sleeping. So Dawson is at second with nobody out, and the National League batting champion, Tony Gwynn, will be the hitter. Tony batted 351, the National League pennant winning Padres last year. Former San Diego State basketball player. Hits this one on the nose into center field. Herbeck should have it. Oh, Kent. Please. Dawson winds up at third, and Gwynn chugs into second. So Seaver finds himself in a first inning jam, at least partly because of some very shaky American League defense. High in the air to left field. Coming in is Rice. He's got it. Dawson tags. But isn't going anywhere as Wade Boggs cuts the throw off. Keith Hernandez now for the National Leaguers. Longtime Cardinal star. Batting champion in 1979 when he hit 344 and shared the MVP award with Willie Stargell of the Pirates. Base hit. That'll bring home at least one as Dawson scores. Gwynn is around third, but Gibson's throw will hold him. And alertly advancing to second is Hernandez. So the National Leaguers take a 1-0 lead. Thank you. Nettles bloops one into left field. Rice comes on and blows the play. Scoring is Quinn. Hernandez to third and Nettles to second. And you thought this game was easy. Mets outfield to Darryl Strawberry now. A mighty swing and a feeble pop-up. Rich calls and makes the catch. And now Gary Matthews. Gary Matthews. Easily the best dressed golfer on the course yesterday. Coordinated yellow socks, cap, and sweater. Base hit inside third base. Hernandez will score. Nettles the same. It'll be 3-0. Matthews, in customary fashion, knocks his cap off as he heads down to first. Watching him drive off the first tee yesterday, I expected him to discard his golf cap as he headed for the cart to follow the drive down the fairway. Hubie Brooks. Brooks, the hitter. Takes the ball. Andre Dawson uh, joins us in the booth now. Four home runs and five swings. It's not easy with a softball. No, it's not. I just trying to see the ball and uh, get a good level swing, hit it hard somewhere, and just take it off. A lot of the big hitters had trouble uh, hitting the softball, but you seem to have it in the group. Yeah, well, uh, I took a little BP before I came out. That's my secret, and these guys' time is just off. But I'm sure before the day is over with, you'll probably see some thrilling and exciting swings. And here's a look at one of those home run swings by Andre Dawson in the pregame contest as the youngsters scramble for a souvenir. Notice in the background that well-known ballpark luminary, Goofy, Always great to see Goof on hand at the ballpark, huh? Let's go to the bottom of the first. Bobby Gritch starts it in the bottom half of the first for the American Leaguers, and Suckler's first pitch has popped up. Hubie Brooks at shortstop. Has it? Hubie played a month at short for the Mets at the end of the 84 season and is penciled in as the regular shortstop this year for the Expos after being involved in the deal which brought Gary Carter to the Mets. As Kirk Gibson steps in, Tom Seaver joins us in the booth. Tom, a nightmarish first inning. Uh, your fielders just well, didn't give you the you know, support. What are you going to do? Sometimes the sun gets in your eyes and uh, you miss the ball. But uh, I had a little talk with him over there. So we're going to get things organized. Kirk Gibson smacks one off the wall. 
I don't think Strawberry's throw could have held him at second, but the stumble did. Cal Ripken faces Sutcliffe. And takes a strike. Ball and a strike. Your first tour of duty in the American League last year. What are your impressions looking back? Actually, I expected, a, uh, Bob, a big change. You know, you hear about the change, difference in the two leagues. I expected a big difference. And the thing that I was surprised me most was the lack of, uh, of a difference. I, I don't think there is a huge difference between the two leagues. What about in the ballparks, though? I think the ballparks are, are uh, there's a lot more character in some of the ballparks in the American League. You know, Boston is a beautiful ballpark. Chicago, uh, Detroit, Point, number you know, 14. the National League, other than Wrigley Field, right. is really pretty in, in, the sense, in the sense that all the dimensions are the same, et cetera, and things like that. So it's, you know, it's very enjoyable to see and enjoyable to play because, you know, being 17 years in the National League, I've never seen uh, uh, American League clubs, American League hometowns in their ballparks. Gary Matthews making the catch on the Jim Rice fly ball. Is it getting old hearing from players coming up to Number you and saying, you were my <laughs> idol. The guy saying, I get to pitch against you today and I grew up watching you. <laughs> well, there's more and more every year that say that, too. Eddie Murray. Ball one to him. Have you figured out any way to pitch to this guy? I had good luck with him last year, believe it or not. And uh, I just hope he doesn't play catch up. Because if he evens it out, I'm in big trouble. I'll lose some games in Baltimore. Foul down the right field line. You know, it's one of the great things watching a guy like this. You know, with all the talent a player has and all the power that he would have, say, hitting left handed. And all of a sudden, in the middle of a game, he can turn around and do the same thing right-handed, all of Mickey Mantle. You know, that's it's really one of the phenomenal things in sport to be able to do. And he, I mean, he is a phenomenal athlete. And even a good softball player. A three-run homer by Eddie Murray. And he gets Tom Seaver back into it. Cuts the deficit to four to three. Weaver offense, even home run. Batter number 10, Dave Kamen, Oakland A. Now Dave Kingman. Nettles, he's got it. Tom Seaver, go pitch. I have to go back to work on it. I'll see you later. All right. After one, Nationals four, Americans three. Jody Davis to face Tom Seaver. There it is. Oh! Well, this is the Grapefruit League circuit. A closer look shows us that Seaver actually traded his softball for a grapefruit. And Jody Davis made fruit salad out of it. Things weren't so juicy for Davis and his Cubs in last year's National League playoffs. The Cubs, as you recall, won the first two games at Wrigley Field. But back home, the Padres evened the best of five series on Steve Garvey's ninth inning homer in game four. And then, despite having Cy Young Award winner Rick Sutcliffe on the mound in the fifth and deciding game, things really fell apart for the Cubs as the Padres battled back from a 3-0 deficit to take the game, the series, and the pennant. We've got to look at ourselves and, and realize that uh, we've done everything we possibly could. And as bad as you hate to, there's, there's times in this game when, when you've got to give other people a little bit of credit, too. Still, the Cubs wrote a unique baseball story in 1984, one filled with excitement, like the time Ryan Sandberg hit two tying home runs off Bruce Souter in the same game. Last time up, Sandberg homered to tie it at nine in the ninth. He's in a tying run at the plate now in the tenth. Oh! He hits it to deep left center. Look out! Do you believe it? It's gone! That game kind of got me started for the rest of the year. You know, it gave me a lot of confidence that, that I could do something... Uh, Special for the Cubs, uh, you know, get the big hit, make the big defensive play in a certain game. And, uh, you know, that game just kind of got me started 
for what uh, went on to be an MVP year. Fittingly, toward the end of that MVP season, Sandberg scored what turned out to be the winning run in the division-clinching victory over the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Cubs were the champs of the National League East, their first title of any kind since 1945. Bottom of the second, 4-3 National League, and Twins first baseman Kent Herbeck starts it off for the American Leaguers. With a base hit. So he's on to begin the bottom half of the second inning. Now, Eddie Murray, you told me earlier, you were just going to try to make contact. And you go deep your first time at bat. Well, what I had in mind, uh, it actually failed. I was trying to hit the ball of right field and dump a little double in there just to get the two runs in to get the game close. And uh, believe me, I had no idea I could hit the ball over the fence. you got to generate all your own power in slow pitch softball. Well, yeah, and uh, that, that hurts me right there. <laughs> no, I, I don't hit softball very well, really, and uh, it, it surprised me to hit the ball that far. You decided to bat right-handed against the right-hander. Yeah, I told him that's the only time you ever see me on that side, too. <laughs> no, uh... Oh, that's gone. Get out of here. Wade Boggs. Get out of here. All right. So Wade Boggs, who's not a home run hitter, a high average hitter with the Red Sox, a lot of doubles, but not usually a home run hitter, goes deep here, and the American Leaguers grab the lead at 5-4. to What's the atmosphere like on the bench over there? Well, right now, I'm sure it's pretty good now that we're up here, you know, up here. Whoa, Nettles. In an act of self-preservation, retires Engel. Thanks, Eddie. Good luck the rest of the game. Thank you, Doc. Seaver faces Sutcliffe. Tom was always a good hitting pitcher over in the National League. Left center field, Gary Matthews, the rover. You can use four outfielders in softball. He makes the catch. Number four, Bobby. Bobby Gritch. Tries to muscle up on one and instead pops it up. It'll be a foul ball as Davis, Sutcliffe, and Nettles converged and nobody took charge. So a second chance for Bobby Gritch. Sutcliffe's pitch to the Angel infielder. Lime to center and Andre Dawson has it lined up. Makes the catch. That'll do it in the bottom half of the second, but on the two-run homer by Wade Boggs, the American Leaguers take a 5-4 lead. First up on the top of the third for the National League is Tony Gwynn. He had what was charitably ruled as a double his first time up. A liner to center that Kent Herbeck might have caught, but didn't. Tom Seaver delivers to him. That's the kind of hitting which won Gwynn the batting title last year. Goes the other way and just places one in between Boggs and Ripken. A ground single to left field. Here's Ryan Sandberg. Dream season for him in 1984. He connects on the Seaver pitch. Herbeck boxes it in and then makes the basket catch. At the plate now, perhaps the best glove man at first base in all of baseball. Keith Hernandez of the Mets. There's a base hit for him. Win to second. Hernandez to first. First and second with one out. Nettles. Line drive right back through the middle. Win will stop at third and the bases will be loaded. For the straw man, Daryl Strawberry. Sometimes when you have the ability, a young man like Strawberry has, and a base hit to right, a run will be home. They throw behind the runner and Murray lets it go through. The bases remain loaded. Gwynn scores. And the National League is tied at 5-5. When you have the ability Strawberry has, sometimes even when you have a good year by other people's standards, as he did in 84, it's not enough. Can they turn two? Ripkin to Gritch, he drops the ball, and they don't even get the force, or do they? 
They will call Strawberry out at second, saying Gritch had the ball long enough to record the force. But the double play could have ended the inning instead of run scores. And the National Leaguers take a 6-5 lead. Hubie Brooks. Skies one back, a shortstop. Ripken shades his eyes and makes the catch. But the National Leaguers push two across in the top half of the third and lead 6-5 after two and a half. Five National Leaguers, bottom half of the third, and Kirk Gibson to start it against Rick Sutcliffe. Gibson had a double off the fence and right his first time up. And this one could be an extra base hit. Fair ball inside the line. Strawberry scoops it up. And another two-bagger for Kirk Gibson. After the players had their golf tournament yesterday at Longboat Key, I sat down and talked with Kirk Gibson for a bit about the 1984 season, a year which saw Gibson blossom into a full-fledged star, and Sparky Anderson's team establish itself as baseball's best. The Tigers rode the wave to a remarkable 35-5 and start, and the first week included a no-hitter for Jack Morris. Got him swinging, and he has his no-hitter! With Willie Hernandez performing his heroics out of the bullpen, the Tigers cruised to the title in the American League East, then swept the Royals in the championship series before establishing a three games to one lead over the Padres in the World Series. At that point, Gibson applied the finishing touches. It seems that first Sparky Anderson thought uh, that Gossage would walk you, and you felt as if he would pitch to you. I just had a gut feeling. Sparky mentioned uh, he held up four fingers that he would walk me. And uh, for some reason, I just could feel it that he wasn't. I didn't see uh, Dick Williams put the, uh, you know, the, the sign up, but I motioned back to Sparky. I said, I'll bet you $10 that they are going to pitch to me and that I'm going to do the job. I've had good success. You want the infield in on him? No. No. Well, you go. I mean, I've got, to, I've got to cut. I got to cut. The, you mean you're talking about striking them out? Yeah. We got to bring the infield in. Okay. One out. Now, if he doesn't run good, you can stay back a little further. All right. He don't want to walk you. Yeah, he don't want to walk you. I did let go. I just couldn't help it because when I did that, um, there was no doubt in my mind and anybody else's mind in Tiger Stadium that the World Series was over, that the, t the Tigers were the world champs, and um, it was time to celebrate. We did. Many of you will catch your first glimpse of the 1985 Tigers this coming Saturday on the NBC Game of the Week when they play the Royals in Kansas City. Vin and Joe will be there. Cal Ripken drives this one to left. Tony Gwynn makes the catch for the first out. Gibson remains at second. Others will see the Padres at Atlanta against the Braves. Tony Kubek and I will call that one. Jim Rice gets a hold of this one. Gwynn goes back, leaps, it's gone. So Jim Rice, unable to connect in the pregame home run hitting contest, drills a two-run shot. And it's the American Leaguers' turn to lead. Gibson scores ahead of them. It's 7-6, American League. That brings up Kingman. Nettles has a play. The American Leaguers are history in the last half of the third, but they score twice on the Jim Rice homer and lead 7-6. to six. Barrett's coming in to pitch right now. We're going to get Seaver a win. He doesn't want to go out if he's behind, so we're going to score a couple here, and he'll be the winner when it's all over. New pitcher as Brooks Robinson decides to remove Tom Seaver. Well, I thought for a moment Marty Barrett was going to come in and pitch. Instead, he moves to second base. Bobby Gritch will get a rest, and Tom Seaver will work in the fourth inning. Keith Hernandez up in the booth now. You just made a remark. Uh, this whole setting's like the Little League World Series. It's like Williamsport. It's amazing. It's a lot of fun. I guess there are some of these players, guys from teams in the American League that train maybe out in Arizona, that you never get to run into at any time. Yes, that's true. And it's just the fact, this is, this is like an, an all-star game where you get to play against the guys that you normally, uh, with the guys, 
that you normally uh, play against, and uh, it's a lot of fun. We've been here for the weekend and just had a blast, all of us. Sutcliffe now is a good hitting pitcher. You'll recall the home run he hit in game one of the playoffs against the Padres at Wrigley Field. A titanic shot to right center. Got it. And it's in there for a base hit. Keith Hernandez is at bat is just a few swings away. Give us some thoughts, uh, if you will, about the 1985 match. You've got to be excited about it. Well, uh, we, we obviously, everybody knows we acquired um, Gary Carter, and he's a, quite a ball player. His stats speak for himself. We're all excited about him. Give us the RBI bat we need, and uh, I look forward to the season as far as we had to, to find ways to score runs now with his bat. It should be uh, exciting, uh, well, exciting offensive ball club. Nice, Thanks, Keith. Go grab a bat. Okay. Keith Hernandez of the Mets. Tony Gwynn is the batter. Two on, one out. Top half of the fourth. Kingman in right field makes the catch. Sutcliffe tags and moves to third. Dawson holds at first. Sandberg will be the batter. Kingman hasn't had much experience with the glove the past couple of years. First with the Mets. He was used as a pinch hitter through most of the 83 season. Then last year, of course, DH all the way with the Oakland A's. And a big year for him. Sandberg goes to the opposite field for a base hit. Showing the same kind of instincts he has with the Cubs when it really counts. Sutcliffe scores. And the game is tied at seven in the top half of the fourth. Keith Hernandez to try and keep it alive for the National Leaguers. Loft Seavers pitch into left center field. Gibson calls and puts an end to the National League fourth. After three and a half, tied up seven apiece, and we'll be back after this from your local stations. Jim Rice is with us. Jim, better luck during the game than during the pregame home run hitting contest. Well, you know, you get here and you try to hit five balls out of the ballpark. It's, it's a different swing. Now you just try to go for base hits and just have fun. You played much softball during your uh, life? No. You know, baseball and basketball and football. No softball. Long drive by Herbeck, and it's the fourth American League home run. Add his name to the names of Murray, Boggs, Rice, and now Herbeck of the Twins, 8-7 American League. Getting to know Ken a little bit, I've discovered that he's a man of varied cultural interests, such as professional wrestling. So I asked him one of the crucial questions facing our nation today. What about a wrestler's baseball all-star team, nine positions? Nine position, all-star team. Well, I'd have to put the claw at first base, the Baron. Uh, I think we'd have to put uh, the Hulkster out in left field, Hulkamania. I think we'd have to put Ivan Putsky behind the plate for the fact that Ivan can't move around too much. Uh, he's a little, little stocky. I think Bobby Heenan would probably have to be the manager. Smartest man in wrestling. Definitely is. And could be one of the smartest men in, in baseball if he, if he got into the game of baseball. They don't call a guy the brain for nothing. Exactly. Exactly. I'm a, I'm a uh, Mad Dog Vashon fan from way back. Uh, he definitely would have to play someplace. Maybe a second baseman. I think he could probably be able to turn it over real well. Uh, we put the Warriors at the, on the base pass as far as coaching concerned. Maybe we'll put one at uh, third and one at first. Uh, at shortstop, but maybe one of the fabulous ones would play short. I don't know which one. They, you know, they could switch. They always doing the big switch move. Maybe they could switch once in a while during the game. Center fielder, they have to have somebody with some speed. Uh, what about the superfly? Superfly would be good. He can, he can dive. He can do some serious diving. I've never put Andre the Giant out in right field. Doesn't cover much ground, no. but uh, good wingspan. He has a, definitely a good arm, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure he can throw the ball if he can get it out of his hand. <laughs> Wouldn't have to use a glove either. <laughs> Here's Herbeck's Minnesota teammate, Dave Engel. A lot of people think Billy Gardner's twins will have a good crack at it in the American League West this year. They were in it till the final week in 1984 before a losing streak did them in and the Royals took the title. Solid wrap to left for an Engel base hit. Gary Matthews' throw gets away. And Engel moves down to second base. Now Tom Seaver will have a chance to help himself. Neither Sutcliffe nor Seaver will want to boast about their ERA after this one. A drive down the line and left. Tony Gwynn drifts into foul territory and makes the catch. The second out and Marty Barrett will be the hitter. 
When Jerry Remy was hurt a year ago, Barrett stepped in and very quietly hit 302 the rest of the way for the Red Sox. A conscious attempt to go the other way. Sandberg with a good pickup that saves a run. And Barrett has an infield single. You can do that in slow pitch softball. You saw him just turn his feet around in the batter's box and aim it for the hole between first and second, but Sandberg was able to cut it off. Now Kirk Gibson. Hit two home runs and five swings in the pregame home run hitting contest. Line drive, Sandberg has it. It's the third out. The American Leaguers settle for one and lead 8-7 after four. Back at the Longboat Key Club in Sarasota, Florida, top half of the fifth inning. National Leaguers trail 8-7 as Greg Nettles leads it off for them against Tom Seaver. And the Padre third baseman, who rarely goes to the opposite field, pokes this one just inside the third base bag and has a double. Now here's a man who has had his fill of me this weekend. Brian Sandberg, who plays 18 holes of golf with me. I've interviewed him about three times, and now here he is up in the booth. They were aiming at you in that last oh, half inning. It's dangerous out there. Uh, you know, it's so close, and uh, that was a life-or-death situation right there. <laughs> here's Strawberry. Seaver trying a little backhand flip on him. Seaver's crafty out there, isn't he? He's, he's crafty. Hitting the corners out there. Kingman shading his eyes and making the catch, although it almost squirted out on him on Strawberry's fly ball, and Nettles advances to third. Now, the controversy involves Dave Kingman using a first baseman's mitt in right field. Hey, he can't catch it nice. He uses that during the American League. I want my man to hit again. Huh? He hits again. He hits again. He hits again. He, hits again. he, he, he he's got, use, he's got, he uses got that glove in the American League during the season. At yeah, first base. No, no, in the outfield. All right, check it out. That's that's a. Uh... Oh no, he just put that on during this game. Hey, uh, Kong, you tell him to use that glove during the season. I mean, uh, how do you expect him to be a gold glove if he doesn't use this? It? This game's like the last game of World Series out here. It really is. <laughs> tension is so thick you can uh, cut it with a knife no uh, doubt about it what some guys won't do to gain an advantage i think you ought to be kicked out of the game for that i really do instead they're just going to make him switch gloves i think he should have been ejected but they have a problem they only have 10 players <laughs> two and one the count and strawberry will get to bat again his fly ball having been caught by Kingman, and the at-bat is ruled a do-over, as we used to say. Hard shot, but Ripken has it, and throws him out. Ripken to his teammate, Murray. That's got to be the defensive play of the game. Another look at it. Ripken whirling, and then firing on to Murray to retire Strawberry. Cal Ripken, the American League MVP in 1983, after winning the Rookie of the Year award in 82. Gary Matthews of the Cubs. And the Sarge sends a ground ball wide of third. Wade Boggs throws him out. Nettles at third base with two down. And that'll bring up Hubie Brooks, an integral part of the big offseason trade between the Mets and the Expos. Brooks, of course, went to Montreal, where he'll be their starting shortstop, along with catcher Mike Fitzgerald, who'll take the place of Gary Carter, who winds up with the Mets. All I want you to do is save me one of these that has 85 on it okay I, I don't really i don't feel very strong that they're going to be able to just really handle us i know that it's going to be a, a little bit tougher race but uh, just going on last year the way that we handled them in their ballpark and our ballpark um i'm more really concerned about uh, a team like pittsburgh who handled us very very well the pirates were long on pitching and short on punch in 84 so they added steve kemp from the yanks and george hendrick from the cardinals Meanwhile, St. Louis might have lost Hendrick, but they picked up Jack Clark from the Giants. Unfortunately for the Cards, they also saw Bruce Souter split to the Braves. And it's a new look for Lamar Hoyt. A trimmer waistline, no beard, and a Padre uniform. In the American League, Ricky Henderson will be stretching his valuable legs with the New York Yankees this season. While the Toronto Blue Jays have greatly improved their bullpen by adding former Oakland A's right-hander Bill Caudill and left-hander Gary Lavelle from the Giants. Moving into the picture in Baltimore is free agent Fred Lynn. And also joining the Birds, Lee Lacey, formerly with the Pirates. Although Lacey would begin the season on the disabled list with an injured thumb. So in that American League East, several contenders made moves to strengthen themselves in the offseason. 
There's little dispute that it's baseball's best division. Red Sox, Orioles, Yankees, Blue Jays, and of course the defending world champion Tigers. National Leaguers trail by one. I'd be very surprised if this doesn't this game doesn't end with both teams in double figures. Brooks, let it hit him. <laughs> and then pretends to charge the mound on top Seymour. <laughs> That's a little sign of intensity that's, that's out here today. <laughs> so Brooks with the old Eddie Stanky Ron Hunt trick lets the ball hit him. Now Davis goes deep and it is oh. caught at the wall by Herbeck. Thanks, Ryan. Still 8 7 American League after four and a half. <laughs> the American Leaguers didn't score in the last half of the fifth, so we moved to the sixth inning. The AL leads it 8-7 to seven in the Pizza Hut All-Star Softball Game. Rick Sutcliffe. That's for himself, basically because neither team has any reserves and lines a single to right. So the tying run is aboard against Tom Seaver, and the batter will be Andre Dawson. Dawson was the MVP in this game last year. Takes a ball. He's one for two this afternoon. Seaver and Sutcliffe battling through, and Dawson drives one to deep left center. Gibson back on what would be the warning track. He makes the catch. One out, one on top of the sixth. Hits one off the fists. And it's going to drop in, and you can tell by the way that ball left the bat that it had some wicked reverse spin on it. Sutcliffe is trying to score. Ripken's throw is high and over Angle's head. Sutcliffe scores the tying run. Quinn moves into third base. Sutcliffe receives congratulations. And now resuscitation. Now it's Sandberg. The game tied, eight apiece, man at third, one out. Ball one to Sandberg. And a base hit up the middle as he reached for the outside pitch. And now it's the National Leaguers' turn to lead, 9-8. It's a seven-inning game, and we're in the top of the sixth. Keith Hernandez. Keith Hernandez, first base. Sandberg is at first. Hernandez was the runner-up to Sandberg last year in the National League MVP balloting. Great year with the Mets. And drives one into right center field, but Herbeck is right there, and he makes the catch. That'll bring up Greg Nettles, joking a little bit with Wade Boggs, the American League third baseman. Last time up, Nettles squibbed one just inside the third base bag, and he's saying to Boggs, get close to that line, pal, I might be going that way again. The atmosphere here completely relaxed in contrast to last October in San Diego when hysteria prevailed as the Padres came from behind to beat the Cubs and take the pennant. That ends the inning. I talked with Greg Nettles about that championship series comeback. At what point did you begin to feel that, hey, we got a chance to win this? Well, you know, we're, we're down two games and you've got to come back and win three. The chances don't look too good. And and being a realist, I... I you know, I didn't think I didn't like our chances that much. But. Well, I think everybody really believed that we had a chance to win it after Game Four, because uh, that was a game where it was just up and down battle the whole game, and, and Garvey hit the two-run homer to win it in the ninth, and it was just we didn't care who was pitching the next day. We know Sutcliffe had beaten us three times, and we just wanted to, we just felt like we, somehow, some way, we were going to win that game. Here's the goose, the one-one pitch. A one hopper to Nettles, to Wiggins, and the Padres have the National League pennant. Oh, Doctor, you can hang a star on that, baby. I think that call by Jerry Coleman in San Diego was a little different than what Cub fans heard from Harry Carey on the same play. We're going to the bottom of the sixth here. The National Leaguers lead the American Leaguers 9-8. And Dave Kingman is the leadoff man for the Americans. Sutcliffe's pitch ripped through the hole and into left field for an inning opening single. Tony Gwynn gets it back in. Kent Herbeck now. He's singled and delivered one of four American League home runs thus far. National Leaguers lead it 9-8. A solid base hit. Strawberry cuts it off nicely before it can go to the fence, and Kingman stops at second. 
The American League is trying to rally from a 9-8 deficit. And here's Boggs. Dave Engel of the Twins on deck. Hit the deep center field. Dawson glides over, makes the catch. Kingman tags, but then holds. Well, look at that throw from Dawson to Nettles. One of the best guns in baseball. And even on the softball diamond. An arm to be feared. Angle the hitter. Last of the sixth in a seven inning contest. Another chance for Dawson. Two gone. And now Seaver. His team trails by a run. Seaver finds the hole. Pass to diving Hernandez. Kingman is stopped at third base by Brooks Robinson. Then the ball is thrown into the crowd, and Kingman comes home to score. Herbeck to third and Seaver to second. The game is tied at nine apiece. And the ruling is two bases on the overthrow. So they let Herbeck come home on the overthrow into the crowd. So when the ball goes out of play, it's two from the last legal base touch at the time of the throw. He's already to second, he's going to get two, he's going to get third, he's going to get home. He was from the time of the throw. I want to change the rule. <laughs> and of course, this brings to mind one of the great moments in sports history, a flashback to last year's Pizza Hut Classic, a similar play on a ball hit by Steve Gar.